Hi guys, I'm Smitha and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things AI and machine learning related. Today is day six of 100 days of ML. If you guys don't know what 100 days of ML is, check out the video for day zero. It's gonna be in the description box below. It's gonna be very helpful at explaining what exactly is this movement slash challenge slash course. And it's gonna give you a better understanding of what sort of trajectory we're gonna be taking and also what sort of courses I'll be looking at. Without any further ado, let's start with day six of 100 days of ML. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about NumPy and Pandas and giving you a brief introduction into as to what it is. And also we're gonna be looking at some basic functions within both of these two different Python libraries and we'll uh, actually practice it in Colab as well. So there's definitely gonna be some coding involved. So let's get into it. Going forward, it will be very helpful if you guys have some very basic Python programming knowledge. So if you guys don't have that, I'm gonna be linking some uh, links for some basic Python tutorials in the description box below. So check that out. And that's gonna be very helpful to actually help you catch up with maybe writing some Python code in the near future. So in today's video, we will be looking at both NumPy and Pandas. What exactly are NumPy and Pandas? So NumPy and Pandas are different libraries within Python. Libraries in Python help us to code stuff by using existing functions within the libraries without having to hard code all of those functions from scratch. So they are extremely useful. So NumPy is known for helping us with matrices and also linear algebra. This is its specialty. And Pandas is useful for data frames. So if you are taking data from JSON files or CSV files, and you can easily convert them into data frames using Pandas, and it will help dealing with data and actually uh, passing data into your models in the future much easier when you're dealing with data frames. So we'll be looking at two different tutorials for NumPy and Pandas. You can check them out at this link. I'm gonna be linking this in the description box below. If you click here, we're gonna go to the Colab exercise for NumPy and this link takes you to the Colab exercise for Pandas. Addition to this, I'll also show some other coding examples, which can give you a better idea of how to use NumPy and its functions and Pandas and its functions. So let's get started with the NumPy ultra quick tutorial. So the very first thing that uh, you need to know that whenever you want to use a library such as NumPy or Pandas, etc., in any of your Python files, you first need to import it. So it's very important that you add an import statement. So import NumPy as NP. The reason why we put as NP is to give it a short form that you can use to call it later on in the code whenever you need to use its functions. So instead of calling NumPy, you would just say NP. So as I was telling you guys, NumPy is all about creating matrices and uh, performing various functions and operations and mathematical operations on matrices and vectors. So the very, the most basic unit in NumPy is something called an array. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually create a one dimensional array. In order to do that, we are going to give a variable op one dimensional array, and we're gonna store the array that we're creating into this variable. In order to create an array in NumPy, you have to say, you have to call the array method, so np.array. Within np.array, we are filling it up with an eight element vector. Technically, you can consider this as a one by eight matrix, uh, one, one row and eight columns. We are filling it up with random variables, uh, random numbers, and we're passing that into this one dimensional array variable. We can check this by also printing one dimensional array and it will show you the structure. So as you can see, we have just created our first one dimensional array using NumPy. And you can also see that this is actually a one by eight matrix. In the next example, we're actually going to create a two dimensional array. So two dimensional array is equal to NP dot array and see the difference in how the data is being written. The numbers are being written. They're actually being stored in square brackets. Uh, depending on the row that they're in. So six comma five is one row and the next row is 11 comma seven. So that's stored in a different square bracket. This is to indicate that we are starting a new row. So this is actually a three by two matrix that we're looking at. And if we print it, you can see that. 
Another thing that you guys can do with NumPy, if you don't want to store it with these random variables, because you don't always need to use these type of variables. If you want a matrix, which is just full of zeros, you could instead call np.zeros, which will give you a matrix full of zeros. And then if you call np.ones, that will give you a matrix full of ones. Let me show you guys how you can actually go about creating matrices filled with zeros and also ones. So we're going to create an empty variable. Array zeros is equals to np dot zeros and in order to give this dimension because we need to give it the size of the array that you actually want to create right so we can create a three by two a uh, three by two numpy array filled with zeros so three two and let's print so as you can see you guys have actually created a three by two matrix filled with zero and you can actually do the same thing with ones as well. So let's just actually copy this code. Array ones. And instead of NP zeros, we're going to put NP ones. And we're going to print array ones. And there you have it. That is also a three by two matrix filled with ones. We can also populate arrays with a sequence of numbers. So for example, np dot arrange. And then if you give the input of five to 12, it's actually going to create an array which has values from five to 12, but it will not include 12. So it will put, it will print five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all the way to 11. Next up, we'll also look at how to actually populate arrays with random numbers, because a lot of times we want to generate random values within our arrays. So this is actually a good way of doing that. In this particular example, we're actually going to be creating a six element vector, which has random uh, values between 50 and 100. So how do we actually go about doing that? Uh, as usual, we create a, a variable random integers between 50 and 100 equals to np.random.randint. np.random uh, generates random values, because, but we specifically want integer values. So we also have to call randint. And here, the input, we are actually stating what is our minimum value and what is our maximum value. Since we actually want to include the number 100, we are putting our highest value as 101. Because if we do that, uh, it will not include 101 in our random generation, but it will include 100. And we're also giving the size of this, uh, the size of this vector, which is six. So we want six different values. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, it has generated six random integer values between 50 and 100, including the value 100, and it has printed that out. So guys, let's take a look at how we can generate a six element vector full of random values. But in this situation, the random values will be float values between zero and one. So we're going to have to call the np.random.random function in order to do so. And the input we're giving here is six because we want six elements to be generated. In addition to that file, also take a look at the NumPy quick start uh, on their actual page where you can see a bunch of different code snippets to use a lot of their basic functions such as calling for size or shape or how many dimensions. These are very useful to know. So next up, we're actually going to complete a task of creating a linear data set using a lot of the functions that we just learned about. So the first thing we have to do is assign a sequence of integers from 6 to 20, including the number 20, to a NumPy array named features. And also we have to assign 15 values to a NumPy array named label, such that label is equal to 3 multiplied by feature plus 4. Now if you look at this equation given, you can see that it's actually very similar to the most basic linear regression equation, which is equals to y equals to mx plus c, or y equals to w1 x1 plus b. So 3 is actually referring to the weight, uh, feature is referring to your x value, and 
4 is referring to your b value. So since we want a sequence of integers from 6 to 20 including the value 20, what we should do is be calling the arrange, arrange function on numpy, so np.arrange and then 6 comma 21 because we want to include the value 20 and in order to do that we have to write 21 instead because it doesn't include the upper range value as we realized and for label they've already given us the equation so it is 3 multiplied by feature plus 4. So as you guys can see feature which is the first uh, row which is printed which is the first array which is printed is values all the way from 6 to 20 which is exactly what we wanted and the label array is the second array which is printed and as you can see it has actually implemented that equation you can also double check your answers by clicking the code here now let's actually move on to task number two which is adding some noise to the data set if you guys have looked at the homework that i've given you should know what noise is noise essentially is essentially referring to data which is actually lying quite far away from our best fit line or our best equation or best model fit so to make your data set a real a little more realistic insert a little random noise into each element of the label array you already created to be more precise modify each value assigned to the label by adding a different random floating point value between minus two and plus two don't rely on broadcasting instead create a noise array having the same dimension as label now as you guys noticed label is actually a one by 15 array so since we want a label to be containing random values between minus two and plus two so if you guys recall to create a random value uh, using np.random.random we actually get a random value from 0 to 1 so now we actually want a random value from minus 2 to plus 2 so one thing we can actually do is call np.random.random and since we want 15, uh, 15 different values we have to give the input 15 because our size is 15 and we actually multiply this by 4 the reason why we do this is when we multiply this four by 4, we know that we are actually getting now our random values, random float values will be between 0 to 4. And then we minus it by 2. And when we do that, our random values that we're going to be getting is going to be from minus 2 to plus 2. And also let's look at the label. So since we actually want to add this noise to our label, all we have to do is label equals to label plus noise. And we can check our answers. So that is actually how you can go about adding noise to your data set and also how you can create a very simple linear data set using a lot of the functions in NumPy that we have just learned. So NumPy arrays are the basic building blocks of creating and dealing with vectors, matrices, and a lot of different mathematical operations. In addition to this, I highly recommend that you guys uh, check out this entire tutorial pages that we have on the actual NumPy website because they are also extremely helpful and useful. So guys, that is a very short tutorial on how to make use of NumPy and a lot of its useful functions. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at the Pandas uh, library and also a lot of its functions. Hope this video was helpful and thank you guys for watching and see you in my next video.